Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here, Tuesday now, the 12th of August, 2024. Going to talk about PTC number five out here and the impacts to expect from it over the next several days, including the big waves that are coming for the Greater Antilles and eventually the east coast of the United States, maybe up into the Canadian Maritimes. We'll look at the structure of it. It is still struggling a little bit, but it's making progress. Of course, we'll look at some of the computer modeling and try to understand where this is going to end up and, again, some of those impacts to expect over the coming days. All righty. Thanks for joining me. Let's get started. First of all, the old interactive tracking map from the Hurricane Track Insider site tells you where it is, where it's supposed to go over the next few days. The X means, well, we are still in PTC mode, potential tropical cyclone. 1010 millibars on the pressure, so not very impressive but it is in the formative stages. And wait until I show you on satellite. It is a large system, and that's why I do believe this will eventually, and the Hurricane Center forecast reflects this too, this will eventually become a large and quite formidable hurricane. And as such, let's use white to make this pop. I think we're going to get some big waves coming out from this. This is my idea of concentric circles showing waves. Yep, this is going to be a big wave maker. So our surfer community all along the east coast down here, probably even for parts of the Antilles and maybe the Bahamas. Uh, good for surfing, bad for back and neck injuries and rip current problems. And we do need to address that in the coming days. But first, this is going to pass through the Northeast Caribbean Sea. So there will be impacts down here from wind and rain and big waves down there, battering waves in some cases. And as I mentioned yesterday, as this comes through, it is going to be strengthening and organizing, so those effects may be a little bit more pronounced. So keep that in mind. If you're visiting down there, you've never been through one of these, kind of worried about it, well, just stay indoors, stay hunkered down, away from anything that could blow on you. If you've got vessels down there, small craft, large craft, anything in between, yachts, sailboats, motorboats, jet skis, more of those, keep them in port and safe harbor, and you should be just fine. But this is going to pass through as it is on its way into the strengthening mode and then it's going to make its way up here into the subtropics out of the tropics and maybe towards our friends up here in Bermuda this is the five-day position so we don't know for sure it's got it at 110 miles per hour the hurricane center does we shall see I think this will be stronger just based on the overall pattern and the fact that over the last many years here uh, we've seen these systems that strengthen in the subtropics quite substantially when they are struggling in the deep tropics, which right now is the case. Looking at it on the satellite animation this afternoon, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits, there it is, large envelope of energy for sure. Center of circulation might be trying to develop right in here somewhere, if I had to guess. Another large area of energy sitting out here. Got the monsoon trough out here. Still some Saharan air influence. And we're not quite to that August 20th time frame. We're still about eight days away when the Atlantic naturally sort of turns on. Uh, but the overall environment ahead of this, nice and moist, and the upper level winds are going to be cooperative. You don't see any strong winds cutting across the system like that. I mean, here's a good example. These are strong upper level winds here. And if this were up here, it would be sheared apart. So it does have a favorable environment from which to work. And then looking at the vorticity signature, you know how much I like this. Easy to spot the energy with it. And it's a large area. I mentioned that. You saw it on the other satellite picture, the animation there. This is the vorticity signature. That's a lot of energy that's trying to get bundled. And again, all of this, just move that through this region and then up into the subtropics here. And you can imagine this is going to be a large system, probably a large hurricane, big eye. And it could send out, again, a lot of swells and big waves towards the east coast eventually. And that could lead to some rip current problems, although, like I mentioned, the surfers, you're going to love it. The other thing working in its favor, we've talked about this ad nauseum, the very warm water temperatures relative to average, absolutely, they are definitely higher than normal. And the actual sea surface, temp sea surface temperatures, also pretty warm. This is up in the subtropics, but I want to show you this. Uh, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 26 Celsius all through here. Everything south of there, nice and toasty. Plenty of available energy for this system to work with when it does get into that area. That's why I think the peak intensity will occur somewhere in this zone uh, once it gets out of the deep tropics. It's just one of those situations. Now look, I want to tell you real quick, I don't think 
This has a real good shot at directly impacting the United States. In other words, a landfall or getting within 50 miles. And if it does, I think it could be New England. And it's not entirely out of the realm of possibility that that's what happens. And some of the models are changing just a little bit, a few subtle shifts here and there. I'll show you that as we wrap things up when we take a look at some of the guidance. But just don't fall asleep on this if you are in New England or Atlantic Canada, which most people, they pay attention. But we got a lot of distractions in the world on a daily, hourly, minute-by-minute -minute basis, sometimes second-by-second -second basis. Just want to make sure you are in tune, all right? Boy, the Gulf of Mexico, I wanted to show this yesterday, but I forgot. But here it is today. The anomalies certainly are, are uh, substantial, but the actual sea surface temperatures, remarkable. 31 Celsius, so we're getting into the upper 80s to almost 90, covering an enormous area of the Gulf, 32 Celsius here. Look, I just got to be straight with you. When we get a hurricane threat in here, if the atmosphere cooperates, we are going to have the potential for some very, very intense hurricanes in this area. So let's just stay on top of things. That's your warning shot. You know, we got to be real sometimes. Can't sugarcoat it. Can't hold your hand through everything and say, oh, it's all going to be okay. It might be, but with these kind of sea surface temperatures, if you get something in here, and again, the upper levels and the thermodynamics all cooperate, we could have a very powerful hurricane with those kinds of sea surface temperatures. So just stay on top of your game along the Gulf Coast while we're focusing on the Atlantic, all right? So here are some of the cool tools off the Tropical Tidbits dashboard over on the uh, Current Storms page. I want to show you this, a nice plot of the spaghetti models. This is the 12Z. And uh, let me refresh this, by the way, and see if stuff has updated to the 18Z. It hasn't just yet. It's still kind of early. But the overall consensus is for this to move through the islands down here, strengthening as it does so. So again, those effects will be compounded just a little bit. And depending on how organized it gets, how quickly, will determine how those impacts are felt. But be ready for heavy rain, gusty winds, locally rough seas, that kind of stuff, through the Northeast Caribbean, and then it makes that turn. And this is gradually shifting ever so slightly more to the south and west with time, the overall envelope. Not enough to get a lot of concern going for the east coast of the U.S., but we're not completely out of the woods yet on potential direct impacts. Just keep that in mind. Please, looking at the modeling directly, in other words, you know, one model kind of here po uh, to point out, the GFS, the operational here from 12Z today, there's our, well, let's get this, this is, uh, yeah, this is today. This is what I want to show you. There we go. I want to make sure everything's right. There's our piece of energy over here. And um, again, this is initialized 8 a.m. Eastern time. That's why we call it 12Z or 12 Zulu time. And this, by the way, is the same part of the atmosphere that this is. It's that 5,000 foot level. But this is a satellite analysis. This is the GFS and what it is simulating as a numerical weather model. Does that make sense? So keep your eyes on this. That's the area of interest right there. PTC5 comes into the islands, starts to organize, does so more so up in the subtropics there. And then it tries to go around Bermuda. Bermuda is right there. Let me back it up. Side steps around Bermuda. And then there's just a subtle hint, and I'll show you this on the 500 millibar chart in a second. Maybe it's not a direct out to sea slam dunk after all. I'm 90% sure that's going to be the case, that we don't have to worry about direct impacts for the East Coast. But as I show you this, you'll see it's not completely out of the realm of possibility. So watch right here. This is the feature. There's the trough that's going to help to get it north initially. But watch what happens here. Then we're going to compare it to yesterday. Comes up, kind of sidesteps Bermuda, and then the ridge starts to come back in here out of southeast Canada. Troughs back over here. There's a lot that could happen. This could retrograde. It could cut off. This could be stronger. Gets pinwheeled back in closer to New England. Then it goes out. We could do the what-if scenario all day. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what the ensembles do for us. They play the what ifs. And the Euro has a bunch, I think it's over 100 now or something, different ensemble members. The GFS, I think we still have 20 ensemble members. But the overall idea of this being 100% locked to recurve, you know, out to sea is still going to affect land directly or indirectly, right? But that recurving pattern, 
that's not completely locked in just yet. And I'm just being, again, real about it. We, we don't know for sure. I and mean, that big high, these anomalies, and by the way, this is the anomaly, the 500 millibar height anomaly. So how much air is in the atmosphere out there? And the deeper the blues is the deeper the trough. The more, uh, I guess, tighter gradient or whatever, more red you see uh, up into almost purple would be bigger ridges. And it's just, you know, something to watch. You still have a few days. It's just five days from Bermuda, and a lot can happen in five days. So just don't go to sleep on this. And here's what I want to show you today. It directly impacts the Canadian Maritimes up here. Yesterday, if we just go back 24 hours, and this helps to prove my point, uh, it was a much more easterly look. It went east of Bermuda, close but still east, and then well southeast of the Canadian Maritimes. And so let's just switch it. There's 24 hours ago. Here it is now. So it is closer to the Canadian Maritimes, a little bit slower too. So slower gives the ridge more time to build back in, and we'll just have to see. It's not, again, a slam dunk on out to sea. Nobody has to worry about it, but hopefully so, right? All right, want to welcome all the new YouTube subscribers this year, and uh, certainly the last several days. It's, it's just great. It really is. I just want to show you that, look, we got a lot more than just these daily videos. We have those, then we have some documentaries you can look at. Uh, going stuff, stuff going all the way back to the past, our Hurricane U series, which is an educational kind of podcast that we do. And the newest one, I'm getting ready to put it together, should be finished today, is with Quick Dam, uh, their retail account manager, Marilyn, Sher Marilyn Sheldon, try to say that name quickly. She joined me the other day for a very candid conversation about Quick Dam, how they can help you, just the whole flood mitigation industry. And the, uh, the idea that we don't want to be using sandbags anymore. There's a better technology now. And a couple of YouTube shorts on there. And then the old documentary is way back 20 years ago even. Even before YouTube, we were making documentaries. So, yep, if you're not a subscriber yet on the YouTube, go ahead and do it. We appreciate it. And we also appreciate you sharing and liking and all that good stuff that the social media world consistently says to do. But we do appreciate it. All of us at Hurricane Track the family of us, the nice community we got here. Thanks for watching. I am Mark Suttoth, and with that said, I'll put this online for you, and I'll see you again tomorrow.